Here's a lost book by one of our greatest and most cherished authors, David McCullough. You may be wondering, how could anyone lose a book by David McCullough, one of America's most popular and beloved historians? Simon & Schuster has published his work for 54 years, beginning with the Johnstown Flood in 1968 and, exactly 50 years ago, The Great Bridge, the epic building of the Brooklyn Bridge. His most recent book, The Pioneers, the heroic story of the settlers who brought the American ideal west, was published in 2019. Along the way, he's won two Pulitzer Prizes, two National Book Awards, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest honor awarded to American civilians. It is no exaggeration to say that David McCullough is a national treasure. So how could one of his books have been lost? Well, it wasn't nestled away in a box in his attic. It was hiding in plain sight. One day, while reading about David, I noticed a reference to a book called Brave Companions, Portraits in History, published in 1991 by Prentice Hall, a division of Simon & Schuster that was shut down the same year. The book wasn't exactly out of print, but I'd never heard anyone say a word about it, and it certainly wasn't as widely available as David's many other classics, such as 1776, John Adams, and Truman. Brave Companions is a collection of portraits, a gallery of notable Americans. Many of the pieces were originally written for Audubon Magazine, Life, Smithsonian, and American Heritage, where David was an editor and writer for many years. Some of the figures are well known, such as Harriet Beecher Stowe, Teddy Roosevelt, Frederick Remington, and Charles Lindbergh. Others are scientists, artists, and explorers who are no longer household names, but they're connected by what the author calls lives of active discovery. He writes, they are immediately charged, renewed by what they do. If there is a prevailing, unifying theme, I suppose it is the role courage plays. Normally, book publishers don't get that excited about previously published essay collections, but when the author is David McCullough, there are reasons to get excited. When it was published, the New York Times Book Review described the essays as models of compression, perspective, and the discriminating use of detail, and deemed the book several steps above average. Yet the book disappeared. It shouldn't have. It's a wonderful book, and I mean wonderful literally because these pages are resplendent with David McCullough's quintessentially American sense of wonder. We see Frederick Remington enter the office of Harper's Weekly, the country's top magazine of the day, in full cowboy regalia as he begins his ascent as one of the great artists of the American West. There's a magnificent account of the Roeblings and the building of the Brooklyn Bridge, which the author notes can never be thought of as just an engineering marvel or an architectural masterpiece or the perfect expression of 19th century industrialism or a turning point in American history or a nice way to go over the river. In addition to all of that, it's a story. Before I ever came to Simon & Schuster, I used to tell people that I wanted to publish the next David McCullough. So when I was offered the opportunity to publish the real David McCullough himself, naturally I said yes, and I've had the privilege of working with him and his editor, Bob Bender, on The Greater Journey, The Wright Brothers, and The American Spirit. Whenever I read him, I marvel at the economy and the beauty of his language. In Brave Companions, he writes, my earliest ambition was to be an artist. I think this book of exquisitely crafted portraits should be regarded as an enduring example of a great historian's art. And that is the word according to Carp.